Hello viewers, today I want to talk about one of the best books I've ever read, which is Mehmet My Hawk by Yashar Kemal for the country of Turkey. Wow, uh, this is just one of the best stories um, I can even think exists. A cheap way to say it, which a lot of people do, is that it's Robin Hood set in 1920s, 1930s Turkey. Um, after World War I, um, where you have this young boy, Mehmet, who escapes, uh, tries to escape, and then eventually escapes his village, uh, because his village is, is owned by this feudal landlord, um, Abdi Aga, who just overtaxes people and is very cruel, um, especially to Mehmet and his mother, and, um, so he escapes and then joins some brigands and then kind of um, is this is the nemesis of these landlords in the area. So that is kind of just a very that doesn't do this book justice at all. That description. There's so much more to it. There are complex characters around Mehmet that I I actually felt some of the side characters were just as deep and just as interesting as Mehmet and the kind of arch villain of the story who at the beginning I thought was kind of a stereotypical villain but even Abdi Aga the main villain of the story becomes more complex as it goes on and that was really interesting and also um, it, it has a bit of a feel of like a wild west tale but Really, the story is just so interesting and just keeps moving chapter to chapter. And while there is a lot of of this um, culture of Central South Turkey, the Anatolia region, infused into the book, I feel like you could take this story to any part of the world in almost any time period and it would still be an amazing story because it's just got these timeless archetypes, but at the same time subverts expectations and um, characters redeem themselves or switch sides or um, and the story goes in, in directions you don't expect at certain times in just the right places. It is so masterfully done and unbelievably this was Yashar Kemal's first of many novels and it's his classic or his, his number one classic, um, his most popular book. And I just think that's incredible. Um, this, this was just truly inspired. Um, I, I, I had heard that um, Yashar Kamal said something like, I don't write for others. I don't write for um, a cause. I don't write for myself. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't even write for myself. I just write. And uh, it was something to that effect. That is not the exact quote, but that was the effect. And wow, it's um, it has that feel of something that just flowed out of him in the right moments. And it's, uh, I don't know how to sell this book more than what I already have. So one interesting thing I did try with this book was to take notes after each reading session. And so I can tell you exactly how many sessions it took me to finish the book, which is seven. So um, even right away, right at the beginning, I was particularly drawn to the surrounding cast of characters. Even though Mehmet is clearly the main character, his name is the book, Mehmet My Hawk, um, the characters around him who inspire him or help him are just as important. And that's going to be a recurring theme here in this review that I get back to. But I'm going to try something different with this review. And know that there are, from this point on, probably going to be spoilers with increasing, uh, you know, increasingly spoilery as it goes on. But, um, 
Yeah, I I don't know how else to describe the book without just saying I wholeheartedly recommend it. It's an amazing story. It's it's definitely my favorite. Um, if I had to pick a favorite of the books I've read so far for this uh, project of reading all the countries um, of the first eleven, anyway, and and there were some great books in there. So. Um, I'm just going to begin. In in chapter 1 through 3, I kind of found myself thinking that, again, Abdi Aga is a very stereotypical villain, and, um, you know, his cruelty is so kind of over the top. And my opinion of that did change as the story went on. But then there was also the kindness of Suleiman, who is a villain, who's um, a man in a, in a nearby village who takes in Mehmet, and allows him to tend to his goats. He warns Mehmet, you know, don't cross the hill over there, or they're going to find you, and, and uh, Abdiaga's going to take you back. So Abdiaga's really kind of built up as this boogeyman, this kind of uh, very scary, um, feudal landlord type of character. Um, and Mehmet, to me, at the time, inexplicably kind of breaks this rule and, and crosses. Maybe he misses his village, Maybe he's maybe it's still not enough that he's escaped and he's safe. Maybe he misses his mother or feels bad that she doesn't know where he is, and that's a likely a likely one. But he does, and then he's um, taken back to the village. And even Suleiman had noticed there was something wrong with him, as he st stared out into the the distance of the fields. Um, the descriptions of the geography of this region I thought were just incredible. There wasn't a single time that the Kemal started um, describing these um, areas of Anatolia, the plateaus. Um, the different plateaus have their own personalities, the swamps, the mountains. Um, the, the images became so vivid in my mind. Um, and they integrated themselves into the story in such a way that um, I, I couldn't imagine it without them. And, and they all added to it. <clears throat> there, was, there was no point where I thought it was excessive, even though there were quite a lot of them. And there's like a, a very important feature of the plain where Mehmet is from are the thistles. And the thistles are obviously quite symbolic because at the, you know, by the end of the book, um, the villagers make a tradition of burning the thistles, uh, which is a, also a representation of their freedom from Abdi Agba when it does come. Now, I'll keep going kind of through my thoughts as, um, as I read this book. Um, so Mehmet is... He disobeys Suleiman and is taken back to his village, again as a young man. He's punished by Abdi Agba. His, his mother is severely punished. Um, he, he drives them nearly to hunger, and other villages, villagers have to um, help him. And I felt that I, I, I don't know, I, I felt my soul captured in Mehmet. I related immediately all of my current problems with Mehmet's struggle, even though his struggle, of course, is on an order of, um, you know, poverty and, and uh, difficulties that I've really, I've never faced that extreme of a situation that I couldn't get out of in my life. But I still, I mean, this is what reading is. You adopt the character's struggle. You become them. You project your own struggles onto the main character. And, and this is what allows you to grow from reading, I believe. So, it's not in the intention that I'm saying I'm going through the same thing as Mehmet, but that Mehmet and reading the story helped me through some things that I was also thinking about. I became Mehmet by chapter four. My mind was in him. And um, so when he's taken back to his village, um, I, I, you know, I felt this feeling of, yes, you're just going back to the same thing. You're starting where you began. Um, the villagers rally to help Mehmet and his mother when they're punished for Mehmet trying to flee. And um, then we kind of skip to age 18. Mehmet is now 
um, coming into adulthood, and he's able to make a good enough living at least to have a few nice things. He's got some nice socks from his his uh, love in the village. Her name's Hachi, and she's an important character. Um, and then uh, Mehmet and his friend Mustafa, they go to, to a town for the first time. They've lived their whole life and they've never been to town. They look upon town with wonder. They meet a colonel who uh, tells them of other wonders in the world. You should see Istanbul, he says. And um, it inspires a lot of things in Mehmet. Mehmet's, Mehmet realizes that this the town has no owner. There's no feudal landlord here. And um, so he, he, when he goes back, he tells Hache, Hache, we're going to escape together and with my mother. And he tries to get his mother on board, but his mother says she won't do it. So um, Mehmet tries to make a plan with his, you know, his girlfriend Hache to try to escape to this town and, and escape Ab Abdi Agba forever. However, Hache is... Um, engaged by force to the niece of Abdi Agba, Aga. And so there's this whole scene where um, they, they try to escape and, uh, and Abdi Aga and, and um, sorry, did I say niece? I meant nephew. So yeah, Hache, was, Hache is engaged to Abdi Agba's, Aga's uh, nephew. So the nephew and Abdiaga go hunting for Hache and Mehmet because they've escaped. And Mehmet here, for the first time, he shoots Abdiaga and the nephew. The nephew dies, but Abdiaga lives. And this happens a few more times. Abdiaga, you think Abdiaga's dead, but he comes back. So he's really like this, this villain type. But every time he comes back, he becomes more frail and weak in your eyes. And by the end of the novel, he's kind of this, uh, he's an old man, broken, running away, cowering from Mehmet. Um, but this, this gets me to the point where Mehmet now has to, has to flee and, and become an outlaw and join up with a band of pretty nasty bandits who are led by, by a really nasty guy. Um, what's his name? Durdu, Durdu. Uh, was is his name and um, Suleiman's the one who makes this connection. Suleiman, the man who, in in the beginning of the novel, when Mehmet runs away, gives Mehmet shelter and allows him to herd his goats. The same Suleiman now brings Mehmet to the mountain and 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 uh, pretty much hands him over to the outlaws and says, "This is your only chance. Go with them." But he gives him advice, and there's actually. This is the only section of quotes that I wrote down of the whole novel, or the, the only quote, I should say, and it's fairly long, but I'm going to read it because obviously it was quite profound to me and to where I was at, and I actually think now that it's a major theme in the book, and, it, and its importance only resonates more at the end. Before Suleiman takes Mehmet to the bandits to go live as an outlaw with them, he tells them, he tells him some advice. Don't get too familiar with everyone as soon as you join Durdu's band. Every one of them will want to strike up a friendship with you, and they'll all try to be pleasant and kindly. They'll take great interest in you. They'll tell you all their troubles. People are like that. But you must keep to yourself, and this will help you gain prestige in their eyes. You must believe with dignity, behave with dignity. As a brigand, you must be respected by your companions. Now don't go and say to yourself, I'll get to know them all the first day and be friends with them. If they find your weak spot, they'll never leave you in peace to the end of your days, and nobody will respect you. As the days go by, you'll get to know them better. Measure people not by their words, but by their deeds. After that, you can choose your own comrades. If you allow them to get a hold of you, you're finished. There's no difference between the mountain and the prison. I underlined that part. There's no difference between the mountain and a prison. There are leaders in both places, and those who follow, who, those who follow are their slaves. The leaders, 
The leaders live like men, the others like dogs. You must be a leader, but don't treat the others like slaves. Let this be the secret of your life. And uh, it really, it really comes off as like, you know, this, uh, this like mafia leader advice of like how to command respect kind of thing. But, and it makes me wonder about Suleiman, like Suleiman at the beginning kind of came off as this kindly old man herding goats and running a farm. But does Suleiman have some backstory here? Um, I don't know. It makes me wonder. But uh, so regardless... <clears throat> Mehmet joins up with with this band and eventually you know he comes he comes to blows a bit with Durdu and and they have their differences because Durdu wants to rob him a, uh, um, a nomad leader that helped Mehmet and um, one of his companions and he won't stand for that so that's where Mehmet kind of goes his own way it's just him and like two other guys uh, really on their own so, um, and, and then there was this, like, there was, like, this, uh, this confrontation where, where Mehmet had, in this moment, he could have shot Durdu when, when they go their separate ways. He saves this bandit. Durdu's, Durdu's thing is, like, he robs people and leaves them without their underpants and completely humiliates them, leaves them naked, and that's, like, the, this, this, um, guy, Ker, Kerimaglu, um, is this nomad leader who he's got at gunpoint, but then Mehmed has Durdu at gunpoint and just says, you know, go away. At this point, it's like, you're thinking, no, just shoot him, just shoot him. But afterwards, they're, like, Mehmed and, and his companion Jabbar are talking that this mad Durdu has, like, an untouchable madness, uh, admiral and disgusting all at the same time. He's, um, he's like a psychopath that gets his way through unpredictability and ruthless humiliation of others. There's one scene when they're fighting the police that he, he basically puts them in a situation where they should have all been killed or caught. But the way he, 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 he courageously and recklessly just jumps in the fray, throws grenades, and he gets them out of it somehow. Um, and uh, even Mehmet and Jabbar couldn't... Uh, shoot him even though they they um you know saw him almost do this to somebody who didn't deserve it at all and uh there's this other character sergeant Recep, who's fascinating he's got this mysterious past he used to be an old companion of big ahmet who who mehmet swears that he met earlier in the novel when he is and his friend were on the way to town um there's this whole, like, uh, brigand lore behind the story. It's really cool. Um, this culture, underground society of brigands. And um, at this point, I'm thinking, wow, what are, what are they going to do? This Sergeant Jabbar and Mehmed. Um, and then, on the other side of things, Hache got sent to prison when um, she was caught with Mehmed. Um, when Mehmed when Mehmed shot... Um, uh, Abdiaga and his nephew. Um, later, uh, Abdiaga gets the whole town to testify against Hache unjustly and say that she killed the nephew, so she gets sent to prison. And in prison, she meets another woman um, called Iraz, who's really interesting and has this whole interesting backstory of her son was killed by a landlord and she tried to get revenge and now she's in prison. And she and Hache, there's this whole chapter about how they support each other in prison and and use the idea of Mehmet being this this brigand outlaw who's um, uh, out there as like a... Uh, well, they, they both think of, of Mehmet as like their savior in some way to help them get through prison. It's or, or like this idea in their head. But that's the thing. As the book goes on, Mehmet becomes more and more of a myth. And the way that he's more of an idea than a person um, starts to take hold, and the characters around him start to take more central importance. Um, Mehmet's mother uh, um, is eventually killed, and uh, and there's I didn't even mention Leymali. 
Lame Ali is like the probably one of the most interesting characters in the book because he helps um, he, he's like a tracker and anything he tracks he's got to just follow it until until the end so it's like it's like the idea of of um, of intelligence acting without conscience and so he's the one that actually helps Adiaga find Mehmet even though he doesn't want to um, once he's on a trail he has to follow it to the end and he feels so bad for this that he refuses to testify against Hache, Mehmet's um, girl, uh, when when uh, it comes down to um, when when it comes down to Adiaga trying to get everybody in the village to testify against her. So that's his his first thing. And later he he starts helping Mehmet and does everything he can to help Mehmet find Adia, uh, um, Abdiaga. And, and to try to help Mehmet and to the till the end of the story he um, he's you think he might be a double agent because he goes to Abdiaga and um, Abdiaga tries to kind of buy him and get him in his service and he plays along so up to the end of the story you're still thinking he's like a double agent and he could go either way but he comes out on the side of Mehmet and um, this tug of war of Lame Ali Lame Ali, in many ways, determines the winner of this struggle. The, this this um, uh, older man who has a particular ability for um, tracking people and uh, physically um, has a physical handicap, but um, also this curse that he has to follow any trail he sees, and he's kind of in the service of whoever is with him. But at the end of the book, he chooses not to um, help the police find Mehmet, even though they find him anyway, but he chooses not to help them. And so that's a that's an interesting character growth for him as well. Um, so in, in the end, um, a lot happens in the final third of the book, but to wrap it up, the villains do get their come up, comeuppance, but um, the hero has to lose his love. Hache dies um, shortly after giving birth to... Um, their, their child, um, but she's shot as uh, the, the police come after Mehmed, and um, so not only that, but um, Mehmed has to make an interesting choice at the end of the novel. He's revered by all. Um, the government is coming out with an amnesty. Um, to celebrate kind of the creation of the country of Turkey after World War I, the fall of the Ottoman Empire, Turkey becomes, I guess, an, an independent country. Um, after there's some semi attempts at colonization, um, my history is pretty rough on this, but regardless, there's going to be a big amnesty coming up where all the brigands, all the criminals are going to be pardoned um, just to, to establish the creation of a, of a new state. From what I can understand. So everyone's looking forward to this big amnesty. Um, and and in the mix of this, uh, um, Mehmet helped get his love Hache and Iraz out of prison. They go on a mountaintop. So they go from prison to mountain. And it's just like that quote. There's no difference between a mountain and a prison. It is so literal at the end of this book because they're stuck there and they're they're still outlaws. They're waiting for this amnesty, but Abdiaga is still out there. Um, there, and and the second time that they tried to kill Abdiaga, uh, Mehmet unintentionally, with the help of this crazy sergeant Recep, who who was an old outlaw, um, they burned down an entire village, which is atrocious, and they still didn't manage to kill him. And um, this sergeant dies shortly after, but seems actually happy that they burned this village down. He was a man who harbored a lot of resentment. Now Mehmet has taken his love um, up to the, the top of the mountain, and um, Iraz, who, who Hache had met in prison, the, the woman whose son had been killed by a landlord, and um, Hache gives birth to their son, but then is, is killed. Um, but Mehmet... 
he doesn't have to go back and kill Agdia. Uh, still have problems with that name, Abdiaga. But Hache has been killed. Um, he has a son who Iraz takes to her village. So it's interesting. Mehmet names his son Mehmet, so Mehmet Junior, I guess. But then gives gives his son to Iraz after Hache's shot. So it's almost like he orphans his own son which was quite confusing to me. And this is where the the person of Mehmet essentially disappears and becomes a myth at the end of the novel. He's like no longer a person. He is a mythical figure. And this has been created by all the people around him, by um, in the, the exact moment that the transition happens, it must be this. As he's going into his village to accept the amnesty, he's riding on horseback, the, um, a, a woman who's one of the villagers and a character I really like, though I didn't get much chance to talk about her, um, comes out and says, uh, you know, you coward, you're just going to let him go on like that. Who do you think you are? She kind of like, like berates and taunts Mehmet for just, for just allowing, for accepting the amnesty. He knows he's got the support of all these villagers for his heroic deeds of, of um, killing the bad bandits and um, the bad landlord, but uh, in defeating the bad landlords, but um, you know he's got this reputation that could set him for life. But instead, he chooses not to accept all this land that they're going to give him. He wants to see his village remain free and to continue to burn the thistles that I mentioned, the thistles representing the misery of the existence that they lived in under this feudal, this feudal, uh, landlord. And so he knows he's got to go and kill Abdiaga. He goes to Leim Ali one more time, and Leim Ali gives the exact location, breaks down the secret agent kind of debriefing of how you get into his house. And, um, so Mehmet goes to town, enters Abdiaga's house, shoots him, and then pretty much rides off into the distance forever and it just says no one ever heard from him again and that's it he's become a myth i was kind of stunned by that ending the fact that he kind of just disappears and becomes total myth but now it all makes sense and this is it there's a story in the book um where uh they explain the name Mehmed, my hawk, comes from, there's, there's this hawk's precipice um, where there's a story that a, uh, there was a climber who, who climbed up and stole a young hawk from the nest. The mother hawk swooped down and attacked the climber and both the climber and the young hawk fell to their deaths. Revenge cannot be taken without sacrifice and loss. That's the best I can come up with from the, meme the meaning of my hawk. Mehmet is the hawk because he cannot take revenge without sacrifice and loss. And to become a myth is, is, is all kind of part of this. The, but the people of the story, the villagers, the ones who helped or betrayed Mehmet and Agdi Agba, Agba the best of which call Mehmed their hawk in the end. Lame Ali, most of all, who plays double agent throughout the entire novel, but in the end saves and guides Mehmed to victory over his rival. The tracker, the one who must always follow a trail, refuses to help the police catch him. Iraz finding a new life and raising the baby Mehmed, uh, Mehmed Jr., orphaned like his father as Mehmed disappears forever. The police sergeant who, having the opportunity to arrest Mehmed while his wife is giving birth, says, I cannot arrest a man in this condition. He goes away with honor, giving meaning to the myth of Mehmed. The main characters of this novel are not Mehmed. They are the ordinary people around him who teach him, who shelter him, uh, even those who hunt, betray, hurt him. Um, who will make him what he is. All of these people who make him what he is are the main characters in the novel. Mehmed becomes an idea, a myth. 
And that is why I think this story is so archetypal and so relatable, even though it's it comes off as this sort of, um, uh, I don't know, just a, it, it, when you just describe it as a Robin Hood of Turkey, that just does not capture how all of these common people become the real actors of the novel by how they choose to help or hinder or what they choose to do. The characters have true agency. They're unpredictable. They're complex. I began this book on a day um, that I could read outside. It felt like spring, and I'm ending it in the final hours of a two-day snowstorm. So the weather has seemed to follow the progress of this book. But what will rise up in the devastation left behind um, from the storm and the struggle between Mehmed and Abdi Aga? Um, what will those left in their wake who tell the myth go on to create in this world? Um, and when they say there is no difference between a mountain and a prison, we're not talking about a mountain or a prison, but our lives. There is, um, you know, what is a true leader? I feel like that that saying from Suleiman, did, um, did Mehmet himself, did he return to the mountain after wandering into the will, you know, disappearing into the wilderness at the end of the book? Is he free, finally? Freedom is a major question of the book, and the author, I'm very certain, uh, from what I've researched, uh, did have Marxist leanings, but I think I could have read this without ever having that cross my mind, because the question of freedom, owning your own land, is, is something very essential and very basic, and considering um, the ideas of Marxism in a feudal system is so far removed from what, to me, people mean when they talk about the struggle of like marxism versus capitalism or whatever it's just i you know that doesn't even matter we're talking here just a, a book about um characters seeking um uh freedom characters seeking um self-actualization and um the the burning of the thistles becomes a tradition in Mehmet's village. Once um, Abdi Aga is, is dead, they say, it, the end of the story says that they continue to burn the thistles. And as the book opened with these beautiful descriptions of the, of the geography of Anatolia, it ends with this beautiful description of this tradition being carried on and the plateau lighting up with fire for three days every year. And this is something I think we all need to do in our own lives is every year take a moment to set fire figuratively not not literally to all the things that we that are are creating misery in our life um whether they be mental um or you know old clothes throwing out old clothes at new years um which i guess is a peruvian tradition and, um, you know, kind of just, just cleansing ourselves of these things in our lives that are no, that are not doing us any good, um, and, and seeking freedom and self-actualization for ourselves. Again, I, looking at Mehmet and his journey, thought a lot about my, my professional life right now and my career and what I'm doing in, in that part of my life and, um, and my journey became Mehmed's journey. Mehmed's journey became my journey. Um, and I thought about all the ways in my life that um, I can uh, uh, seek freedom. And, and just as an average person, like the average people in these books, uh, in this book, um, can contribute to a greater myth as well. And I'm still kind of putting together what it all means. The book, the book had a, obviously a huge impact on me just because of its great story and great characters. And they are characters that will be walking around in my head for a while. And I don't even care that this book is, or, sorry, book. This video is like 35 minutes, 40, probably going to be 40 minutes. Um, I just, uh, it really has been brought home to me when I find a book like this. Maybe I can't articulate what's so great about it in 10 to 15 minutes. 
Maybe I don't have time to edit these videos properly or make them that watchable, but just to get all these ideas down and um, and someday I hope I can I can create something a little bit more articulate. But um, but yeah, what a what a beautiful novel, and um, I will definitely read more of this author. I can't believe that there's four books just like like three sequels to this book. It makes me wonder like. Where does it even go from here? Like Mehmet's son, I guess, his companions um, have their own stories. But, um, I mean, this book is so complete in itself. It doesn't matter that there's, there's sequels or, or not. Uh, so I think I've said really all that I've wanted to, to get out. Maybe not in the most organized manner that I wanted to. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, There's no difference between a mountain and a prison, but where is freedom to be found? Thank you all for watching, and um, I hope I hope you will continue to follow me on this uh, journey through the countries. Um, hopefully, some of the other videos won't be so rambly, but I do appreciate uh, any of you time whatsoever and having my thoughts on this channel. So, take care. See you next time.